How's it going? So in today's tutorial, we're going to be making a sort of abstract flower animation. But before we get into that, let me talk about today's sponsor. So today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. We've just entered 2020, a new decade. So if you want to go in and learn some new skills and up your year, deepen your existing passions and get lost in your creativity, Skillshare has tons of online classes that are right for you. If you don't know about Skillshare, it is an online learning community that offers membership with meaning. With so much to explore, real projects to create, and the support of fellow creatives, Skillshare empowers you to accomplish real growth and creativity. Skillshare offers classes designed for real life, so you can move your creative journey forward without putting life on hold. You can learn and grow with short classes that fit your busy routine. Skillshare has tons of Blender tutorials, and there we got some soft body stuff. We got liquid and water animations. We got interior stuff. There's a lot of classes on there that are really high quality for you to go on and explore. Personally, I'm a graphic designer, so I have to work with logos. So George Boca's class called Logo Design with Grids, Timeless Style with Simple Shapes. I've learned a lot from. It's been really fruitful in my work. Skillshare is also really, really affordable, especially when compared to pricey in-person classes and workshops. It's an annual subscription of $10 a month. In the description, you can get two free months of a premium membership to explore your creativity. You can get that in the description. So now let's get into the tutorial. All right, so we're gonna go in here, clear up your scene, make sure it's empty. We're gonna be in 2.81 here, Blender. And uh, right up here on the render engine, change it over to Eevee. We're gonna be using rendering in Eevee. You can render them in both engines, but Eevee is just gonna be easier. And the uh, volume we're gonna add later is just gonna look nicer. So let's get into how to do this. So we're gonna go up. Shift A, and we're gonna add in a uh, UV sphere here. And we're gonna hit tab, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up here to the face select, just select one, I'm gonna hit C, so I can select a bunch of them. So, and then I'm gonna go and say, I'm gonna get, uh, this looks like one, two, three, four, five rows of faces, and we're just gonna bring them down just like that. Just get all those rows, and if you accidentally do that, if you middle click, it'll deselect them. So we're gonna go here, Select these just like that. We're gonna get a pretty big flower petal here. Um, so we're just gonna get all these right here. Just like that. Now, if you have your selection, if you hit Control I, inverses that selection, I'm gonna hit X and click faces. And here's our flower petal. I'm gonna go ahead and hit A, to select all the faces. I'm gonna subdivide it here, bring up the smoothness, and I'm gonna subdivide it one more time. So this is our basic flower petal. Now. We're going to animate it. The way to animate it here is we're going to go to the modifiers and we're going to add in a wave modifier. And then it's just going to do that. So we need to play with these parameters over here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy all the parameters I have on mine. So on speed, it's 0.02. Kind of slows that down really nicely. And then on height, we're going to give it, say, um, we're going to give it one, a height of one. So now we have this guy. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the uh, thickness to the guy. All right, so we're gonna hit right here. We're gonna go to solidify, and we're gonna give it two bumps here. And then right here on your um, sphere here, in case you scale it up, go ahead and control A and apply scale. Then what we're gonna do is we're going to bevel it a little bit. So I'm gonna pause this animation seat to see how the bevel's affecting it. So here on the bevel, we're gonna go and select angle for the bevel, and then Play with your width until you like the bevel width on here, and then say, give it three segments, and then just play with that. Right click and shade smooth, and now you have a smooth flower petal to uh, mess with. So, now we're gonna give it the flower shape. So, the first step to do that is adding in an empty plane axis, and then go back to your modifiers and add in an array. So, uncheck relative offset, click object offset, and click empty. And then what that's gonna allow us to do is we go to the rotation settings here on the object um, settings, do that, and then go back to the uh, array, and then array it just like this. So we kind of have an unbloomed petal. So if we press play, we have this. And so this is where you start playing with the actual, making the actual shape of your uh, flower. I'm gonna go ahead and just give my scene a bunch of frames so it'll just keep animating forever. Um, so we take that. So you, what you wanna do is you would click on the empty, go to the settings here called the, uh, the transform settings and you can play with that rotation until you get some cool stuff you can play with it see how you like to, your flower to look you can get some really cool stuff that don't even look like a flower um, but we're gonna go I'm gonna go ahead and copy the settings that I have on mine and just a heads up depending on where you delete the faces and things you're gonna get 
tons of different results. So we're not going to get the exact same animation you saw in my file, but we're going to get a very, very similar one. There, there's just so many parameters here that when you play with them, you can get so many different ideas and so many different instances of this design. It's really, really cool. And that's what happens when you do procedural stuff. This is mid procedural, not fully procedural because we did have to delete some faces, but everything's done in the modifiers. All right, so for my settings, we have negative 62, 24.2 on the Y, and on the Z, we have 115. And so when we do that, we can see how the animation is looking. We need to add some uh, more petals in the array. So we're going to take this here in the array and just go until all those slots are full. So now you can see we have a full flower. And then what you can do, click one, hold down control, click the empty, and you can move them together by hitting R twice to just to move it around together, or you can parent them to another object. Also, what you can do is you can scale up your flower like this, and you get another amount of cool results with this flower animation. This looks super scary and kind of cynical. Um, but yeah, you can have a lot of fun with this design. And then you can also take the location settings and play with them. So you can go down with it, go up with it, all kinds of stuff. You can get a thousand different results with this. Um, so then you can play with your animation and see how it looks and see what you like. And then now let's go into setting up my camera just to view it. So control alt zero, snap it to view. And then let's go ahead and light this guy. We're just gonna use a basic HDRI. So if you go up here, we're gonna go to hdrihaven.com. So right over here, and we're gonna go and pick an HDR. I like to use a, a sunset one. So we're gonna go to um, outdoor, find a nice sunset HDRI. So we're gonna pick this one sunset right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and download the 4K one. So place it on your desktop or wherever and go back to your world settings right here. All right, click color right here. This little circle right here by the color and go to environment texture, click open and go navigate to your HDRI. Mine's right here. And if we go to Z, rendered view, you should be able to see the light playing with your scene just like this, so that's nice. And then I'm just gonna go ahead for the floor and bring up a plane and then bring my plane down until it uh, passes up my flower. Now let's start shading him. We're gonna give it a nice pink kind of look. So hit the shading tab, hit zero to go to your camera view. I'm gonna click new. We're gonna make it metallic here. Nice pink. And then we're gonna give it a clear coat. And then here on the roughness, we're gonna make some glitter. So add in a color ramp. Plug that right there to the color ramp. I mean, on the roughness, add in a Voronoi. If you have the uh, Node Wrangler add on enabled, hit Control D to add a mapping node and a texture coordinate and use the object coordinate here. All right, so plug the color coordinate into the color ramp. I don't know if coordinate was the correct word, but. Doesn't matter. Um, so we'll just bring it up a lot here. And you can play with the color ramp to add glitter to your guy. Let's see, give it 500 on the scale to give us some nice color, maybe 300. And then press play. It should look really nice. Playing around with that. All right, now for that weird light that I put in the middle of the scene. So you have this thing coming up right here in the bottom. So if we can just see the animation here, just a second. So in the bottom, you have this thing going up in the middle. So I wanted to show you how I animated that. So we'll just keep it right there. So you can see this thing jutting up here on the bottom. And it's uh, on mine, you can see it has a gradient, a light coming to the middle to give it a little bit of more mystery in that shading. So we're gonna go back to the shading tab. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a mix shader. Mix shader here, add an emission. And we're gonna plug it right up to there. So now we have that, we're gonna make it red just so we can see the difference here and make it pretty bright. So now we have this glowing thing. Um, so we're gonna go up here to the factor. We're gonna add in a color ramp. Plug the color into that factor. And then we're gonna add in a gradient. We're gonna get it a gradient texture. We're gonna hit Control T on the gradient to get the mapping node, the texture coordinate. We're gonna add the object node to that vector and then plug the gradient into the color ramp. And then the last step here is to add in spherical. So now we have that light here in the middle and you can play with it like that. And you can see, we bring it up the brightness, just like that. And then here in the EV settings, if you turn on bloom and uh, also turn on screen ambient occlusion and uh, screen space reflections, you'll get some nice effects with that glow. And then you'll just press play. 
and you get this really interesting glowing effect inside of your flower that just gives it this really interesting amount of uh, mystery. Now mine, it juts up more in the middle, but depending on your design, it would work or not. And then if you're using cycles, it'll look really cool on that uh, glowing if you're not actually actively seeing that middle. But it gives it a really cool effect, and then you can add some gradients to that and do some cool things. Here on the bottom floor, made it new, made it metallic, made it a similar color to the flower. If we go back to the scene here, we need to scale them up, maybe bring our flower, I mean our camera, something like this. You can also, one thing I would recommend if you're having trouble um, with picking your composition, go to the camera settings and change it to orthographic, just like that, and then you can move around your camera. And orthographic gives it, gives it this really cool look when you're scaling in and out, and you can press play, and uh, you get this really, really cool animation and playing with the color, things like that. Um, you can go back to the shading and play with how that looks. Maybe make it darker, more pronounced pink like this. Press play. It just really adds some effects and really cool look to your scene when you're playing with it. All right, so last thing I did to add some flair to this animation was I added a cube, scaled him up pretty big, control A and apply the scale. And then I'll just make it pass up my camera. Control A, apply scale. We'll go to, we're gonna go to the shading here and we're gonna add a volume. So a principled volume, so type in VOL. Click on principled volume and add it to the volume socket here in your material output. And then what we'll do is on the density, give it 0 0.01 on the density, add a color ramp to the emission strength, and then add a noise texture. Noise texture, hit control T to add that texture set up and use the object coordinate here in the vector. Plug the noise texture to the color ramp. We're gonna add the detail right here, and then crunch this down, and then bring your scale up a little bit and the emission color, make it like a blue so it stands out. Do something like this. And then in your volumetrics here, on your EV settings, I would say bring it at 4px, give it some quality. I'm gonna crunch this in a little bit more. And we have a nice little amount of uh, volume in our scene. So it's kind of getting in the way, it's a little bit too much. Uh, so we'll go back to shading. Click on the cube material say on the white portion here in the color ramp, bring it down to make the volume less pronounced just to give it sort of a, a hint of volume. And then that sort of covers up the lack of things going around. And uh, it's a little bit too much. What I like to do also in the EV settings, right here on the camera, on color management, give it, on look, give it very high contrast. And that really makes your scene pop and gives you those beautiful reflections in that clear coat, things like that. So there you go. That is how you make that interesting flower. You can make a thousand different designs with this concept. Even things that don't look like a flower, you can make them metallic and do some really weird sci-fi stuff with it as well. So thanks for watching. Hope you learned something and I hope you enjoyed it.